begun, be one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine light on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the path of peace. Unto us the Christ is born. Come, let us worship him.
and oblivious to the consequences for sin, which is eternal condemnation. Blind in unbelief, blind in sin, so that we cannot see him, cannot know him. And we are happily unaware that this condition exists. Dead in sin, I believe, but thinking that everything is fine. That's where we would be. And while it seems so possible to, to believe that God simply cannot exist, that God cannot be one of us, it leaves us in a world of hurt. Nothing good can come from that. There's no joy can be in our lives if that's the case. And so, in our reading, we heard what, what the Apostle John says to us, we start to begin to realize what really is impossible. Impossible for us to be alive. To stand condemned before God for physical sin. Impossible for us to see the light because we, we close our eyes to it and we refuse to understand it because we are poor miserable. We remain enemies of God, wishing that whatever he says to us will not be true, insisting that his existence cannot be real, and at the end of the day, we'll be proven to be right, and he'll be proven to be wrong. That leaves us cut off from him forever. It is impossible for us to come to God. We desperately need him. We desperately need to be his children. But if it's our decision or our will that this should happen, that will be impossible. And so when we realize what truly is impossible, for us to have a, a close relationship with God, for us to be with Him, when we realize that that's impossible, we start to understand just how amazing and gracious and compassionate our God in heaven is. Because when He looked in upon this world and saw what miserable, poor, rotten sinners we were and how desperate our situation was, He came to us. When he realized that there was a separation between us and him, and when he saw that we could do nothing to bridge that gap, he came to us. God in heaven took on human flesh, set aside his power and his glorious majesty, and was wrapped in cloths and placed in a manger, born of a woman, born under the law. God who is infinite, whom we truly cannot comprehend. God, who does more than we could even imagine, he became a child. And he lived among us. And he did that so that he could be with us and be one of us, and in this way, save us from our sins. Save us from our unbelief. Save us from the blindness that would cause death. He did it by coming into the world, and as one of us, overcoming every temptation that came his way, being perfect before God, obeying the law, with righteousness, and then taking that perfect achievement and that righteousness to the cross and giving up his life so that our sins could be paid for. So that we would be considered holy and righteous before our God in heaven. He came to do this. And it seems impossible. He did it. Because he's God. And so we rejoice. Saints and angel hosts rejoice because we see the glory of God poured out for us. The grace of God shown to us in this way that we could never comprehend, that we'd never be able to find, and we would never even want to find. But God loved us so much that he arrived in our lives, lived for us, died for us, and rose again all so that we could be his children and so that we could live forever with him in his kingdom. Saints and angel hosts rejoice. We rejoice along with them. Because God has done the impossible. Amen. <coughs> time of year we hear and sing a lot of special music that has been written and composed for the Advent and Christmas seasons. Carols and hymns that celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus. Today we hear the verses of the very first Christmas as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Here's 
centuries, these words of God saints and angels have been set to music and sung by the workers. These songs remind us of the gift of God's Son, Jesus, as our Savior, and the redeeming work He has done for all of us. Today, we hear this message of comfort as these saints and angel hosts rejoice. God created the first humans out of an age and placed them in the garden of Eden. God said to them, I could eat from any tree in the garden, but I said the tree of, tree of knowledge of good and evil. God's creation was perfect and very good. But then Adam and Eve sinned. The devil came to Adam and Eve in the form of a snake. He deceived Adam and Eve by raising doubts in their minds about what God had said. They ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, disobeying God. Then Adam and Eve realized their sin. Because of their sin, they experienced consequences. Their work would be difficult. One of their sons would kill his brother. They would experience pain, hardships, and torment. And finally, they would die, turning back to the dust from which they were created. The same would happen to all their descendants, to every human being ever born. It is his love for Adam and Eve, and everyone who will come after them, in his love for you and me, God promised to save them from sin. God was sent to us, his one and only son, to be their savior in our <coughs> Thank you. 
chosen servant Abraham. 